Well, hello, welcome to my channel. My name's Lyndon. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate you being here. And in this video today, I want to work on Dorian Miners and I'm going to do another Practice With Me series. So I think this is the fourth that we've done because I've done one called an acid test, which I did ages ago, about three or four months ago. By the way, my production quality is much better now. So hopefully. Let me know what you think. Um, I've done all 12 majors, which is called the acid test. I'm going to put the links in the description below. I've also done major chord tones, minor chord tones, and I've done harmonic minors. And these are kind of really crucial, fundamental things that I would totally suggest that you get really, really, really comfortable with. And in this video, we're going to look at Dorian minors, and we're going to follow the same kind of format. But I'm going to assume that you're not quite sure what a Dorian minor is, so I'm going to explain exactly what I mean by Dorian minor, why we should be using it, how it sounds if you jam on it, and then I've I've got a backing track here which I've produced, which I've created rather on Session Band, which is absolutely fantastic, which gives me the opportunity for me to play the Dorian minor and then for you to play it. Now, this video is for alto and tenor saxophone. I'm going to be putting the names of the, of the uh, sorry, the letters of the scale on the bottom of the screen so that you'll be able to follow along. And it doesn't matter what instrument you're on because it will have alto or tenor, or tenor and alto. I don't know which way it will be just yet. Um, but it will, all of the letters will be there. So you don't uh, have to have learned the scale. But I advise that you do. Do it from memory. I'm doing it from memory. I would learn all of your Dorian minors. So as I've said, I'll play it and then there'll be a space for you to play it. And we're going to go around the cycle of fifths. I'll explain it all to you in a moment. But before we take a deep dive into all of that, I want to say my thank yous. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you so much for people that have bought me coffee and sent me gifts on PayPal. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to support this channel by subscribing, liking, sending me positive comments or feedback, I really, really do appreciate that so much. So Dorian Miners, what do we mean by Dorian Miners? Well, Dorian Miners for me are a brilliant thing to learn because because uh, they come up all the time. That's why I'd want to learn them. Plus, num reason number two, they sound fabulous. They're really, really, really nice. And if you understand them, then you'll be able to play one in any key. And if you're in a band or you're busking or you're jamming or a jam session or, you know, Dorian Minors are going to come up everywhere. So what do we mean by Dorian Minor? Well, there's a couple of ways that we can think about it. And the, probably the two main ways that I would think about it are to the, for the recipe. I'm going to take a picture of this screen, by the way, and I'm going to put it at the end. So the way that you can think about the, the recipe for one recipe, take a major scale, a major scale, and flatten the third and seventh notes. So uh, if I give you an example in D major, if I take D major, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D, and if I number these notes, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this is my friend D major. Now if I flatten the third and the seventh, I'll get this D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and D, and this is D minor seven Dorian. And I can do that, or you can do that, in any key. So just take a major scale, flatten the third, flatten the seventh. It's not a major scale anymore, it's a minor scale. And it's a particular type of minor scale, which is called a Dorian. Now the other way that I could think about it is, have a look at this bunch of notes. And isn't it exactly the same as C major? If we look at C major, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and this is uh, C, major or C major 7 and if I take it from the second mode 
from here, look, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and this is D minor seven, Dorian, and we would call that the second mode of C major. So look, the notes are exactly the same. So there is a couple of ways that you can arrive at a Dorian minor. Whichever way you think about it is absolutely fine, um, but so long as you understand it, that's the most important thing. So if I think about it as the second mode, doesn't that mean that if I've got all of my major scales, all I've got to do is to take a major scale, don't play the first note, but start on the second note, and that will give me all of my Dorian minors. Yes, it does, it means exactly that. So if you know your major scales, the minor scales come kind of buy one, get one free. And if you don't know your major scales, that's another really good reason to practice your major scales. So I'm gonna take this bunch of notes, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and I'm gonna play it and see how it sounds. And I'm gonna use my backing track, uh, if I can find it, which I can, I'm just gonna loop uh, a D minor, and I've set this up now. I am on, should tell you, I'm on um, Session Band Jazz Fusion Tom Crawley, which is a fabulous app. I strongly recommend that you get it. I'm not being paid by Session Band. I just absolutely love what they do, and I love practicing with their app because it's superb. So Jazz Fusion Tom Crawley, and the genre that I'm using is acoustic rock. And I've gone into here, and I have uh, muted nothing because it's also nice and I've gone into here and I've put it into B flat for my tenor sax uh, and then as you've just seen I've just looped D minor so I'm just going to play the scale straight up and down then I'm going to play the chord tones and then I'm going to um, have a little jam if I can get my sling not tangled up with my microphone. Okay, so I'm going to play scale up and down, then the chord tones, then a little jam. Have a listen to how nice it sounds. Tones, one, three, five, seven, nine, up and down. lovely does that sound and I wasn't doing anything difficult and I certainly wasn't doing anything that you can't do so I'm just jamming using the notes of the scale it's just lovely it sounds so so nice right so I'm going to take those out of there so then let's have so I'll take a picture of this screen for you um, and I'm also going to uh, give you uh, the uh, a free download of the transposition sheet because here I'm going to be playing tenor sax and I'm going to be starting on the key of C and that will be G for altos and then I'll be going to F which will be C for alto but you don't have to worry because as I've said I'll put the letters names at the bottom and wh what I'm doing and I'm going to give you a link to this sheet as well so you can download it is that I'm going this way around the cycle so I'm going from C to F to B flat to E flat to A flat why am I choosing that way well no massively important reason it's just a nice way to practice the scales I need to practice all 12 it does sound really nice going that way it will sound really nice going around uh, clockwise as well um, and I could go chromatically so that would be going from C to uh, D flat and then to D and then to E flat and so on but I'm just going around the cycle of fourths um, which is really really nice so uh, I'm going to um, 
tell you how this is going to go. So I've got my uh, backing track set up. Now what I am going to do is that I'm going to make in another video a detailed explanation of how I made this. It's not difficult, there's a bit of a knack to it. Once you've got the knack you'll be absolutely fine. So but I have created this so it's going from C to F to B flat. As I've said it's going around the cycle this way and you're going to have to put up with my terrible singing unfortunately just to demonstrate. So I'm going to play the scale really Really slowly and then you do it. So look, it's going to sound like this. I'm going to give myself a C before I kick off because I won't be able to pitch. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be like this. So it's going to be me going. Then you. Play da da de, then me da da de, da da do de, then you da do. This is absolutely fabulous, and I'm telling you, if you can get through this without having to look at any of the notes, you are doing fabulously well. That would be a really, really good thing to do. And this is exactly the kind of practice that I would do with some of my clients, and they develop really, really, really well. So I strongly recommend that you, um, that you go for it and get your Dorian minors down. Here we go. Right, let's see if we can do this. So get ready.
Fantastic, how did you do? So, however you did, it's all good. We can constantly work on these scales and get more familiar and more comfortable with them. Wherever you are is absolutely fine with, with your development. It's absolutely great. And just know that you can always improve regardless of wherever you are. You're always going to be able to improve on your knowledge and familiarity and the things that you can do with a beautiful scale like the Dorian Minor. I think they're absolutely beautiful. By the way, um, somebody said, why don't you ever play your own brand of saxophones on your videos? There's no re real reason why I don't do that. I've got a beautiful Selma, which I've had forever. Um, no, for the whole time that I've been playing, which is, you know, like decades. So uh, I just use the tenor for no particularly good reason. But this is one of my gorgeous uh, uh, tenor saxophones um, under my own brand. If you're interested in picking one of these up, you're very welcome to ask about uh, about them and see which ones we've got in stock. They're really, really, really lovely. And they are uh, kind of based on a, a Selma Mark VI so, um, in the way that they're laid out and the finger work and the keys and everything, they're considerably cheaper. They're heavily engraved. Fabulous, fabulous instruments. Uh, I really like them. I've shipped them all over the world and they're very, very cool. So if you'd like one, just feel free to ask. Um, I want to say my thank yous. Thank you so much for subscribing, for liking. If you think this video, this tutorial has got some value, then please share it with other saxophone players that you know because I'd love to help other people. And uh, uh, thank you for all of your positive comments and buy me coffee and super, super thanks on YouTube and PayPal. And I really, really massively appreciate it. And it helps me to keep going to make these videos. Right. Stop waffling, Lyndon. Right. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.